Hello, my name's Paul Taylor. I'm a lecturer in tourism here at uh, William Angus. I work in the uh, higher, edu higher education department. Uh, welcome to our industry insights into the uh, tourism industry. Joining me today are uh, four guests from, uh, who work in the industry and will provide some great background on the industry for us. On my right here is uh, Hugh Fitzpatrick. Hugh is the Government Liaison and Industry Insights Caravan Industry Association of Australia and Chair of Young Tourism Network. Cool, that's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Paul. <laughs> All right, to his right is Richard Kellaway, who's the General Manager of CRC Travel Jobs. Thanks, Paul. Welcome, Richard. And Chris Porter is the Head of Operations and Industry Development for uh, VTIC. And Mandy Ho is the Global Ballooning Manager. Yep. Is that correct? For uh, Global Ballooning. Um, so the whole aim of this session is to provide a really good insight into the industry and provide some background uh, for those of you who are interested in entering the industry. Um, so I think to start, what I might do is if you could just uh, quickly introduce yourselves and maybe provide a bit of background as to how you got started in the industry and what your current roles are now. All right, we'll start. Uh, great, thanks Paul. Um, yeah, so my name is Hugh Fitzpatrick. I work for the Caravan Industry Association of Australia. So we're the peak national body that looks after everything caravan camping related, uh, from caravan parks, which is an important part of tourism. We also look after the manufacturing and service and trade elements of it as well. So I've been in the caravan industry for uh, nearly three years now. Um, got started in tourism as a, working as a tour guide over in Europe. Uh, for a couple of years with uh, Top Deck Travel um, and really sort of developed, I guess, an enjoyment for tourism industry. Loved that it was a people-focused sector. Uh, so came back to Australia and, and did my Masters in, in Tourism Management um, here in Melbourne. Uh, so yeah, really enjoy working in the sector and looking forward to the panel today. And the Young, uh, young Tourism Network? Yeah, Young Tourism Networks. Uh, yeah, so we, we have about uh, just over 200 members. Um, we're really well supported by educational providers, including William Anglis Institute. Um, and we're, we're essentially a gateway between students and industry in the tourism sector. So we work really closely with a number of tourism businesses, uh, as well as working closely with students and emerging professionals, just to ensure that they have a good link with industry uh, while they're studying. And so, so hopefully they can find work um, as soon as they graduate. Fantastic. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Paul. Um, Richard Calloway yep. from CRC Travel Jobs. We're uh, I'm the general manager there. We've been uh, we're re the recruiters for the travel and tourism sector, both from a, um, a travel agency, airline, wholesale um, point of view. We also have a business called um, Caretakers Australia, which provides relief management to the caravan park sector and the accommodation sector generally. Um, we've been, uh, I've been there for 25 years, would you believe, recruiting wow. in this industry? <laughs> I know, you can't You're tell, it's <laughs> just my baby face. Uh, but my background in tourism goes a long way back. In fact, I was um, a student here at William Anglis, I'm going to say about 1986, when... Uh, I when here, no, <laughs> I don't think this, this building <laughs> wasn't here. And uh, one of my uh, part-time lecturers was uh, John Borghetti, who went on oh, to yeah, yeah, uh, much bigger and brighter yeah. things, of course, um, yeah. in that time. But uh, yeah, thank you for having me here today. Great to have you along. Chris. Yeah, um, Chris Porter, Victoria Tourism Industry Council, or, or VTIC, uh, Head of Operations and uh, Industry Development. Um, my, I suppose, route into the tourism industry is a bit different. I actually studied a Bachelor of Viticultural Science, so my background's a science degree. Um, went and worked in wineries and did all that great stuff and uh, got a bit tired of working cellar doors and the hours there and uh, travelled like uh, Hugh did. And uh, I was on the other side of the tours though and I think I was sitting in the back of the bus and just enjoying tours going, I reckon I could do that and came back and uh, started doing winery tours and so I was a tour guide in the winery tour um, industry for three and a half years with the Australian Wine Tour Company. Um, after that it became a bit like Groundhog Day, doing the same tour for three and a half years, it was a bit of a time for a change and using, utilising my networks that I sort of built through the Young Tourism Network, um, basically got a foot in the door with uh, VTIC and 12 years later I'm still there. So uh, my role looks after industry development, so we run the tourism awards, we run an accreditation program, um, but I another, have another hat which is with um, Business Events Victoria, which is a convention bureau for regional Victoria. So the Convention Bureau is all about promoting conferencing and business events in regional destinations. So I have a role that I play with uh, that organisation as well. 
Mm, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mandy. Thanks, Paul. Um, so I'm Mandy from um, Global Ballooning. So uh, I'm the business development manager for the Eastern market. Um, so my role mainly is building and maintaining business, like the business relationship with all travel agents in the Eastern market. So um, such as um, China, uh, Singapore, um, Malaysia, Indi um, Indonesia, India, Hong Kong and Taiwan. And also I run some marketing campaigns and also I uh, will do all this um, Chinese social media like the WeChat official account and, um, and also Weibo. So my background is um, coming from Hong Kong as a journalist. So um, I did a Bachelor of Journalism back in Hong Kong and work as a, a television and also a newspaper for four years. And then I'm thinking I would love to just, you know, quit my job, uh, start backpacking around Australia. I've um, been to like pretty much everywhere in Australia. And I set my foot and fell in love with Melbourne. And I decided to stay here and study. And I'm actually a student in Wedemangas five and a half years ago. And I studied a diploma of travel and tourism. Uh, I think I'm really lucky that I met like some great teacher in Willie Mangus that, um, you know, so get me into the industry like Penny, like John, like Adrian. They, some of them are still working here, yeah, and yeah. So, and they helped me to get some like the job as a tour guy um, in the tourism industry. So, I um, first started as a Queen Victoria market as a tour guy. And I worked for a walking tour like Chocoholics Tour, AOT, ETA, and different um, companies that like um, take tourists to Great Ocean Road and Phillip Islands. And uh, in the love working event, I'm very lucky um, to get a job in uh, where, my, where am I uh, for global ballooning. So uh, I started as a sales and marketing assistant. So uh, it's like a dream come true because I love outdoor adventure. I mean, Global Ballooning is the biggest um, holiday balloon company in Victoria. So we have 34 balloons at the moment, fly over Melbourne City and Yarra Valley. I actually did my 87th flight last week. Wow. <laughs> and I still love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very exciting. <laughs> Speaking of the next question though, um, what is it that makes the tourism industry exciting for you to work in? Like, what, what is really attracted to you, you to the tourism industry? And, Oh, I think, think for me, the fact that it's such a people focused industry, you know, regardless of where you work in the tourism, supply chains, whatever your job might be, uh, you get to work with people the whole time. That was a, certainly a draw card for me, you know, whether you're showing them incredible experiences, whether you're talking to them about the history of a place, whether you're talking to them about, you know, policies in caravan parks, you're still... <laughs> <laughs> some really exciting stuff that you get. <laughs> um, but, you know, and I think in tourism as well, there's so many people who are self-made. There's so many um, people who own their own businesses and people who are immensely passionate about the product or the experience uh, that they're giving to tourists. And when you work with people who have that sort of energy, I think you can really feed off that. Um, and it can, yeah, it's just fun to go to, to, go to work and to be able to, to speak to these people about that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, and any others? Any other thoughts? I think it's the diversity. You know, the diversity of the industry. The industry is such diverse in terms of, you know, you can be in events, you can work with tour operator, you can, um, you know, work in the accommodation sector, you can work with um, international companies, so you can travel the world. Um, there are so many options that you can go into and have a great time doing those. There's the people side of it. So normally you're dealing with people who are on holiday, so they're usually in a good mood. Um, so, you know, you get that, that experience. But, you know, it's just an industry that it seems to attract positive people. And, and that just makes the experience of working in the industry so much more better. Yeah, yeah it, never, it, it, always, it never fails to surprise me. I, I, um, I interview thousands of people over the course of a long time and, and fundamentally people just have it in their system that they want to travel and love travel and love the experience of travelling and they just can't get it out. They, some of them leave the industry and then they just come back. There's something, that, something alluring about the, uh, particularly the international world for, for um, young people as they get into their careers and uh, it just doesn't leave them. It's in their blood and it becomes part of their DNA. Yeah, mm. I agree. Tourism is all about passion and I feel like I'm helping, we're constantly helping people to 
like you know take off their bucket list and you know fulfill their lifelong dreams and put a smile on their face every time I still their like the eyes you know sparkle like you just feel like you make this world better like and also it's so much to learn like constantly to learn from and also I think the people in the industry are so friendly and they're open they're so open to share the knowledge and then to support each other I think this is make it really exciting and then um, as Chris said that like I feel like tourism is so like diverse like you can work in the front row and uh, you can go like horizontally or vertically to different companies or like you know to like different city of the world and just make it like really exciting yeah yeah no it's a it's an amazing industry really and my own background was before I was uh, lecturing I actually used to work as a dive instructor Ah, worked as, worked yeah. as a tour guide. I was about to say, we've almost all worked as tour guides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happens on tour stays on tour. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, um, I mean, and that, that's really, I think that is, what well, you mentioned before, that being a, a people's industry is really fundamental. Um, but look, what's happened over the last three months in terms of, of uh, tourism, and I noticed on, uh, on the VTIC website, Chris, that... Um, you know, there's some things that are starting to reopen again. Um, you know, where are things at and, and what are your thoughts going forward in terms of the industry opening up again and the, the opportunities coming forward? We might start with you, Chris. Yeah, on. well, you say three months, we say six months for yeah. the industry. The, yeah. the troubles this year really started back with the bushfires yeah. um, and that really had a huge impact on travel throughout um, the summer months. Uh, normally when businesses would make 60 to 70% of their revenue, that was just gone for a lot of businesses. Um, then we're looking forward to Easter and the Easter holidays and that went as well, effectively. So with the slow shutdown of industry over uh, with China being the first market to actually stop and not allow travel of groups and things out and then borders closing, the systematic shutdown of the industry uh, throughout those first few months was devastating to the industry. Um, as restrictions are easing though, we are starting to see some, you know, some green shoots. Um, we're no by, no by no way are we out of the survival phase. Um, we've still got a long way to go with that. Um, I think the long weekend was a good start back in the beginning of June to sort of see Victorians with all that pent up demand just wanting to get out there and, and start travelling again and start experiencing. And you know, I went up to Mildura and back and you know, a little town witchy proof on the side of the highway had a queue out the front of a bakery and things like this. So um, there is that pent up demand from the local market that are going to travel. Um, there will be a long term recovery needed in the international space, obviously, um, but domestic, I think, be the, the, because we have a big market internally from Melbourne heading out, I think regional will do okay. I think Melbourne is going to take a bit more time to, to get back um, its uh, mojo again um, because we don't have the major events that are attracting people in. They're not going to be happening for a while. International market isn't going to be coming in. And Melbourne is the fishing pond for all the other destinations. So we're here in Victoria and you know we're going to go, let's go to Queensland. When the borders open, it's nice and warm up there instead of staying in, in Melbourne. So I think the Melbourne recovery might be a bit uh, slower, but there are green shoots, which is the important thing to, I think, understand. And uh, we are a resilient industry and we've been through crises before and um, we've, come through, we've come through those. And um, I think we'll come out a lot stronger and a lot better as an industry as well. Just on that uh, green shoots, I look at uh, caravan park accommodation on a weekly basis. Um, and it was amazing, you know, you had occupancy obviously in, at the peak of the coronavirus, you know, under 10%, only the essential workers and that sort of stuff. And then the long weekend just gone, it shot up to 45%. So there is that demand and that, that demand is not going anywhere. It's just how will it be able to be facilitated? So um, obviously part of that's on government and government restrictions and the health advice and that sort of stuff. But it's also going to be on businesses about how do you, how do you supply these experiences, which, which people are, they're always going to want. People are always going to want to stay in nice places eat good food, go to the beach, do nature-based experiences, all that sort of stuff is not going anywhere. So the fundamentals of tourism, which is that consumer demand for these experiences, it's not going anywhere. So that's the important thing to remember, I think, throughout this, that you know, if the, there was a demand issue, that would be a problem, absolutely. If people all of a sudden say, oh no, I want to stay in my apartment every weekend, that's the last thing people are wanting to do now, <laughs> post that. So, yeah, it's great to get out of my apartment today as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely well, agree. I was at Mansfield yeah. and um, over that long weekend 
and I couldn't believe how many people were out. So they could, they, they, in, in some cases, they couldn't really cope with this overwhelming yeah. demand because they're yeah. still trying to comply with the, uh, the limitations that are imposed on them. So it's mm. a, bit of a, a bit of a pull and a push situation. Yeah, mm. sure. Mandy, so what about your case with the global yeah, warming? Yeah, very interesting, Paul. You mentioned Mansfield. Actually, like, we just opened up, like, very exciting. We opened up a new flying um, location, actually, in Mansfield. Uh, just started like a week ago. Uh, now we just got realized like, this is a perfect location and you know weather condition that like flying a holiday balloon. And I feel like tourism is, although international market is our biggest market, like you take up probably most of our business from international. But like domestic response is just really great. Like I feel like we opened we opened two weeks ago. We book like so many private fly. People just get in, just want to fly with their families and friends. And then uh, men's are like, yeah, we're going to fly out a little bit, hopefully, after the ski season. And I feel like people are just seeking, like tourism is really resilient. Um, they were just always seeking for new opportunity and adapting like new products and services that, um, and like. I see some like virtual wine tasting is really interesting, like live walking tour. And like we're actually developing a new ballooning location, like Mansfield is something that new, no one's ever like do it there before. So um, I feel like it's if people is coming out really like a domestic market is so huge. People like can't really go out like myself. I'm just looking constantly looking for something new to do um, in the weekend. Um, yeah, like people will return, I believe. And that's why one of the things the crisis has done. It's forced businesses to, I hate this word, pivot. Everyone's been using it. But, um, but that's what it's forced businesses to do. And it's creating new experiences yeah. that are coming along, like you know, hot air ballooning over Mansfield, or um, how businesses have actually been able to adapt during this time has been really impressive. Mm. Well, hopefully, there used to be a balloon festival at Mansfield. Yeah. So hopefully you can bring that back again, because that Aww. was really spectacular. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, my next question is probably for you, uh, for you, Richard, in terms of, you know, what sort of, um, what people, what people skills do, um, do our future graduates need when heading out into the industry? What are you sort of looking for, given? Look, it's a it's a really in really interesting question because it's a bit of a um, a bit of an unknown quantity. Um, because in order to answer that question, you've got to have some sense of what the industry is going to look like. In yeah. and when we talk about the industry, I'm talking fundamentally about the the travel section of the tourism industry. The local tourism and domestic tourism industry won't change markedly. The mix will be will be similar once things settle down. But the international tourism business, travel agencies, corporate travel management companies will look very different. So in trying to anticipate what skills graduates will need for tomorrow, we have to have an idea of what that business will look like. And business will look very different. So there's going to be a lot less mum and dad retail operations that there are today and a lot more collaborative work um, places. Um, and um, online, the online business will explode. So the old skills of being able to consult over a desk um, that the travel industry has always been based around, um, you know, turning the brochures back to front, knowing the CRS systems back to front, are all, um, are all going to be different skills. So it's going to be more a, um, an over the phone, an email, communication, working in, um, uh, in, in space with different sorts of people. So whereas you'd be sitting in a travel agency office with like-minded people and you'd mm -hmm. share information, because they're all people people. You might be working in a much larger collaborative experience with um, uh, designers or software engineers of that industry and that requires a different level of communication skills. Uh, also the graduates of tomorrow will need to be agile, will need to be able to do everything and um, be happy doing it and not expect the rapid career progression maybe of the generation before. There, there's going to have to, it's going to be a much slower development of business and people are going to have to develop their skills and sit tight for a while until opportunities present themselves. So it's going to be a different sort of beast that will be produced by the colleges um, because the skill set will be different for different environments. So it'd be really interesting to, to see how the industry evolves. Hugh, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I think um, one sort of constant that will remain, and while obviously all the whole tourism sector is undergoing a big, big change, um, the soft skills can never be understated in tourism. Your ability to connect with people from wherever they are, whether they're a CEO, whether they're a front receptionist, whether they're a traveller. Um, I think that's really fundamental to the tourism industry. You do have to be able to talk to anyone, literally, and you have to enjoy doing that. So, and that's, I think that's something that's 
you know, everyone talks about the future of work and Industry 4.0 with automation and artificial intelligence and all that. The things that they will never be able to do is the human touch. So if you can still have that, regardless of whether it's business meetings, regardless of whether it's a host guest experience, that's going to hold you in good stead. And, and the great thing about that is, you know, you can work on this whenever it might be. You can work on this while you're studying, you can work on this um, while you're at a, a young tourism network event, you can work on this, um, you know, whenever you go out for dinner or something like that. So focusing on those soft skills and never understating the importance of that is going to be really, really important, I think, for graduates moving forward. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. That whole networking ability is, is crucial and being able to get them, get themselves connected um, because with a lot of jobs within you know, small industries, like we're a big industry, but we're also a very niche industry or very close-knit industry, that it's not always the jobs that are going to be put out on, on websites or seek. It's, it's going to be word of mouth and you get referred and recommended and, and things across. So completely agree, you know, getting involved and, and networked and working on those soft skills is, is critical. Mm, I agree. Yeah, yeah, this is, well, yeah, light working is how I get my job. So <laughs> it's very interesting, like very, very important. And actually, my first light working event is with the Young Tourism Network. Advocates, we love. Yeah, it's right? actually <laughs> like from um, from really mangas. This is their uh, events that I like, recommend to go. So that's why I start making people like Michelle from the industry. So like, yeah, this is like. Uh, the top things that you bear in mind that you know people, and I think for after COVID that I think some that really ability that's really important is adapted to change, like more innovative that like ever can do attitude because like, you know you fly people like um, your customer flight cancelled or like they have a change your holiday or like you know um, for, like all the safety plan that like we're coming up is a lot of changes that we need to be go through and I think like you have to add it have the attitude saying that we like we can do this and then you how and then think about how you can present this to your customer and also one thing that personally I think really really important is and people who like you know giving like is as a live rewarding to you like to taking people joy as other pe uh, like happiness that is really important, not like just receiving is more giving people. And because like the tourists come over here and you give them, you, you like your role is really important. Like not only the front like um, staff, like reservation from the back end, the operation, everything that like you actually deliver a product that make people happy. So as a, I think that's like bear in mind, it's really important for, um, yeah, if you want to get into the industry. Mm, thank you. <laughs> um, just on that point, um, just to sort of tie up our conversation a bit, if you took yourselves back to when you first entered the industry, um, and if there is a piece of advice you'd give to those who are looking to get into the industry now, what would that advice be? Anyone want to have a go? Well, I, I, I can recall very, very vivid, vividly when I was 18 or 19, uh, having been to William Anglis and looking at opportunities, um, uh, how uh, uh, cautious I was about making contact, particularly with uh, older people. I was an 18, 19 year old and it all seemed a bit intimidating. Um, but Mandy's point's really relevant. You get given opportunities through William Anglis um, and you know there are associations around like Young Tourism Network. Um, it's one thing to know they're around and it's another thing to take the opportunity and actually, and it's hard to go along to these network events because you don't know anyone. But Mandy did. And one out of every 10 will, and Mandy will be the one that gets the job. So it's the ones that take those opportunities to get out of their comfort zone, and it's scary, and just do it. it can be, that's probably the thing I would tell my, my young self. It's make a fool of yourself, get out there, and just take the chance that you'll meet somebody important or that can help you and that you can help as well. Um, I, think, I think for me is when you, when you go into studying uh, tourism, uh, don't, don't have this idea of what the job is that you're going to get out of it. Um, go in with an open mind. You know, when I started studying tourism, I thought, oh, I want to work internationally and, you know, set up tours in, you know, Europe or Asia or whatever it will be. End up discovering that there's some brilliant opportunities to work in, in Australia and in regional Australia and that some of the tourism issues around regional Australia are equally as pressing as in other countries. So, just don't say no to any opportunity that comes up through um, through your studies and and yeah seek out different sort of ones you know I get it all the time people are like oh caravan park sector geez that must be boring <laughs> you're like mate you've got no idea it's fantastic you know, you've got to you've got to do this so 
you just got to be, yeah, don't, don't say no to any, any opportunity. Yeah, that uh, yeah. enthusiasm, I think you're sort of highlighting that as a really important <laughs> ingredient. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Chris, what yeah, probably you? similar to Richard, just be brave. You know, uh, we've all been there. Um, you know, we've always been the student or been the new entrant. And so from an industry perspective, I don't know what it's like in any other industry, but, you know, I know we're all very giving with our... Um, time and energy and happy to help and support and advise and, and, and recommend and I think that's just uh, the way that as we work as you know older leaders uh, older um, leaders in the industry um, so it, it, as I said take that first step I remember the first YTN meeting I went to and I know who I met and I know where they are now and I can still pick up the phone and have a conversation with them so it's that kind of connection that you make that holds you in good stead you know, for the rest of your career. And you know, people that you meet will all end up in different places in different time frames, and you know you've always got that connection that you can make. So yeah, just be brave and, and make those connections. I remember, if I can just add, I remember doing some um, presentations for colleges, travel colleges, tourism colleges. Um, and one of the first things I used to do is I used to say to everybody, um, you'd have a room of 100 people, 100 students, graduating students. And you'd say, you all, you, you're coming here today and you're gonna meet some people from industry. Stand up if you brought a resume along, and you'd have 200 people that would turn up, but five would bring a resume. Um, now things are dif done differently nowadays, but the the mindset's still the same. You know, here was a chance to that you might meet somebody that you could talk to, and only one percent of people will will do that. So you want to be one of that one percent that takes the opportunities the others don't. Um, and I think that's a pretty important point to try and pass across. Mm, fantastic, and Mandy, just a Finish us off. What? Yeah. So you were pretty recently started in the industry. True. Uh, I think one piece of advice that like it just love what you do, and then like is this a quote that like you love what you do and you level it to work a day in your life? Like I'm still feel like that every day, even though, um, you know, it's get up three o'clock in the morning to go to ballooning and I still <laughs> love it and I and then you feel like you are you know you you actually improve yourself like in every like like aspect as well and I think one more thing is hardworking like go beyond and above for because tourism could be very demanding you all know <laughs> and but it's very rewarding so when I first started, like I worked like enormous like hours, and you know just try to learn everything. So is the 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 like the mindset like you think you work hard, but like you actually will do better for like in like compared to other people. So I think that will be make you stand out in the industry. So um, that's uh, also take step out from your comfort zone and actually like in the YT and like work um, events that like it's nobody coming with me, it's just myself and then just try to talk to people, be brave. And I think that is very important. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, look, well, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, thanks to you all for your insights into the industry. Um, and it is a very, very, very exciting industry. And uh, we look forward to uh, chatting to you more uh, next time. Thanks. <laughs>